Hey, I am Pops. Welcome to another comic talk, and we will definitely jump into some fun stuff, but make sure that uh, check out the description for some playlists and things like that. So I don't really have a review set to go. I'm going to drop my uh, Loki episode two review after this in a couple hours. So you can check that out if you uh, feel so inclined in the I watch it so you don't have to category. But uh, quickly, I want to run through just some interesting high points out of New York City Comic Con. Um, again, please ignore the prices. That's not the point of this. Was this show has gotten a lot of publicity for having um, a ton of exclusives. So this is one of the rarest ones. They had this Berserker 12 gold metal variant, and they only did five of them. So here's what this thing looks like. Super cool. I get that. Um, I don't know that there's enough of a demand to warrant this type of price tag. I think that's pretty absurd, but that's just me. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll just kind of run through a few of the others that I, uh, I will, uh, tell you about here. There's also another indie thing done by, uh, Tom Hardy. It's over, it's called Arc Bound. I don't know if any of you are that familiar with it. I am not. I only know of it because of this. So, uh, Arc Bound, these were signed by Tom Hardy. So, um, here's what they look like. There's a def different versions signed by different uh, folks it's all here um hardy and the creative team appeared for a signing arc bound and then um, here you go it is this uh frank thierry book as well different ones and again you got a massive massive price tag on this one as well but super super cool stuff like it is interesting to see the gimmicks and some of the different things that they're doing that they're working on i will say um you know not all of these things would be anything i would be interested in um if you wanted my buying advice don't buy now just just wait a minute right just wait a minute so um I want to give a hat tip here to Bobby. Bobby uh, kind of gave me a little heads up over some of the G.I. Joe covers that were exclusively dropped. Here's one of those. This is the Cobra Commander one. As you can see, pretty cool, pretty cool cover. So that was uh, one of them as well. Uh, there's different ones. There's one for Duke, Cobra Commander. Um, really, really pretty good. I, I liked them a lot. I think that the the price tag on those are running around um, 80 to to $100, so you might want to just kind of look and see if you can find them cheaper. I've seen some folks who listed them very low in auctions, so if you kind of ride out an auction or keep an eye on it, you'll know a better idea of, like, what is the actual going price going to be. Because um, at least for now, I don't think we'll know until some of the dust settles, because this is just the hoopla phase. People... You know don't go there so they didn't know and and they want to grab their copy of one things like this the demand will still be a little bit high on some of these but again you gotta have to know some of your print counts too like if you look at something that's going to be you know 500 or less they're not going to be out there very often in the internet space so you'll have to kind of figure out how to navigate that a little bit uh is there anything in particular that you guys wanted to uh you know know about or think about because i I really um, didn't. I didn't. I didn't see anything that I was like super, super excited about. Even though I will tell you there were some things I should have been. So I wanted to show you guys this. This is this Alex Ross thing, and I love Alex Ross work. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm all about it. It is super cool. It's just another painted thing that he did. Get this pulled up for you. This is around about 500 bucks. It's like a signed print thing. Look at the painted design of all the different characters. I know it's just me. I don't care for that Hulk that he does. Just me. Uh, I didn't think the proportions are quite right on some characters and stuff. I just didn't. I just I thought this print like 500 dollars really. I, ugh, I I didn't didn't care for it at all and. Like I said, the proportions seemed odd to me. Like, look at the size of Monica Rambeau versus 
Beast and Black Panther next to one another with Thor behind her. Like everything seemed photoshopped together. Like it didn't just didn't work for me in this avenue. I wanted your guys' thoughts on this. I thought this was a weird. I don't. Who wants? I don't. I don't know that I get these foil Justice League covers. I don't. And maybe it's just me. I'm just missing something, right? So they they released these, and I saw like one of them pop up, the Wonder Woman. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I, and I was like, what? What's the? Pro so these things are going for all sorts of crazy prices. But as you can see, there's a different one. So there's Superman, Batman. It's just a symbol and it's foil. So I don't know if I don't know that foil. I haven't I haven't had my fingers on it, so I don't know. Because sometimes the foil makes it um, sometimes it can make it easier to keep it high grade. Sometimes it makes it very difficult. So I have to kind of handle it to kind of see kind of what version it would be in to know kind of what to tell you. Um, some of those, but um, and they just do different sets there's usually a regular version and there's usually like a virgin set so here's here's a good example from what's called superior spider-man i'm not plugging this just giving you an example of what i mean when i use these terms so this is the regular version here you can see the title and the number at the top whereas here you don't have it so it's void of that um this would be cool if they had drawn the city <laughs> They did not do that, so it's kind of like just a bunch of dead space. Work, works great if you're going to get it signed. So, you know, maybe it'll end up in a signature series uh, case, and that would be perfect for that uh, type of thing. Uh, I, I will tell you that I was really interested to see the multitude of... Um, I mean, there was something for everybody. Like it was just, this was a massive effort to promote and get something out there. And I'm not a big fan of having this many type of exclusives and things like that. But this felt like the right situation for this. So this is an Ahsoka one. This is Mandalorian number five. And look at this Ahsoka cover. So if anybody's really into this, it seems like it's a very good time. By the way, she's holding the lightsaber properly compared to the people on the show. Um, so yeah, it was kind of cool. A virgin black and white sketch, you know, type cover, you know, so something for everyone, you know, maybe it's not your thing, but you know, that's, that's, that's the cool thing about a show like this is there's sort of like something for everyone, basically. So let me do one last check because, you know, I can't not check spawn because I know Todd was there. Todd's there signing, you know, I know. There we go. Todd's signed Spawnverse book. He had these samplers. Oh, it's so cool. Look at that. Look at a little special space for him to sign. Look at the price tag, though. 500 to 600 bucks is normal. Thousands way too much. I uh, wasn't that impressed with pretty much anything else. There was like some interesting other. Um, variant covers and things like that i'm just not i'm not totally into that so uh but with that i wanted to hop over anyway you know, give me your thoughts obviously on new york uh, comic-con some other things like that because i i love your thoughts um i didn't go no plans to go I'm definitely not going to new york so that's not happening i hadn't done my review so somebody messaged me and said have you seen this thing going on with eric july and ethan and different stuff going on with ice and whatever i said no and I don't want to know because now if there's something going on, I need to do my review because I don't want my review to be tainted by whatever is going on. So I don't want to watch those videos. So I didn't even bother going to any of their channels because I didn't want to accidentally even know. So let me just do this. I didn't do a review of ISA number one. I want to come clean and explain why. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't have it right away. I didn't get an ABC. I, I, mean, I didn't get an A or a B cover. I got a C cover. By the time I got it, it was pretty much old news, right? Um, I'm just going to be honest, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want anyone to detract because I'm a huge Eric, Dubai, Eric July fan. He's a large part why I enjoy doing this. Um, he and I agree on a lot of politics as well. 
And I can't be more happy and pleased for him and the industry. The industry needs this. It needs more diversity of thought. I don't mean him personally. I mean just of thought and kind. Make more stuff. Market's better for it. Got the book. And like I said, old hat on reviews. And I have to be honest, I was sort of underwhelmed by the book. I want to, I want to explain why, though, <clears throat> before I get to issue number two. I felt like it should have been Ripaverse issue zero rather than ISOM number one. Like I felt like the story is bogged down with little side moments that are not ISOM related. Like he's thrown out of the out of the uh, club and he sort of like slams into where Yaira is, right? You know, Alpha Core. Just these moments are sort of like like shoehorned in there for the presence of the universe. And Eric says, well, more to come. I'm like, well, I mean, I guess that's fine, but I'm personally not that interested in having everything just constantly being interrupted, but I don't have a lot of context. I don't really know much about these characters. I don't know power sets. I don't know dynamics and things like that. So by you not giving me much to go on, my book's constantly being interrupted by something else. And it wasn't billed that way. It's billed as being an ISOM story. So I've got multiple pages that are spent on other stuff before I get back to the ISOM story, right? This happens on more than one occasion. And I think it bogs the flow of the book down in some ways. And that this book could have just been like a rip of verse zero book of 20 pages or something like that. And then ISOM would have been this and most of what's in issue number two, because this book felt, um, let me, let me get to the other page I want to get to. Cause I didn't, not everything is scanned here. Hang on. I got to get to where I, where I want to get to. Um, because the, the climax at the end of the book doesn't lend itself to like, I want to read the next book. Um, I will say this, there are moments I love, like I love the concepts that he is presenting, right? So this is the except is the superhero slash mutant superpower individual. He comes face to face with one, even though it's repeated that he is not one and he wins the battle or whatever. I love it. I love the character designs. I love some of those kinds of elements. What I don't care for is I don't like this. This effect happens multiple times there on the right where it's a pretty much, we lose detail, we lose background, we lose whatever for these big dramatic effects. See how this happens? I, I, I don't like it in anime. I don't like it. it it's just, it, that is not my thing. So see how all of that in the background just fades away into this sort of like, but this is the, the tone and the color and the feel that they were going for. And that's on them. So for me, I'm nitpicking something that I don't personally care for. I prefer that 90s McFarlane, Jim Lee background intricate details, those kinds of things. It's there. It's just not always there. So that's a little bit. And then basically the clutch, see how it's like this happens again. I'm like, why, why do I keep having that happen? <clears throat> anyway, um, the climax of episode one is that there's a new unit that, that is uniforms back. And then when we get to, we, then when we get to issue number two, I'm like, all right, we're fighting this creature and it's done through a flashback. We have this great like recap and things like that. And all of this was fine. And I enjoyed all of this um, for the most part. But I will say that, the, but we interrupt the story with here's this other character. And <coughs> it's his style. And it's the flow, I think, is where I would criticize the book the most. And it's like, it's coming later, which would work better. Because it's again, it's their model. Their model is we're going to give you like 90 pages every few months. And the problem is, I'm critical of those books in real time. Like most example, most recent example might be like Incredible Hulk issue number two, right? They re, they rebooted it. Issue number one comes along, it's fine. Issue number two, there's no Hulk, and it's like, well, it's coming next time, and it does, it delivers. So I'm kind of hypocritical if I'm going to be hard on Marvel for doing that, but not on Eric, because Eric has these, these segments of things that are kind of like not explained. We don't quite totally understand context. And it's like, what's going to be explained? Well, that's fine, but it keeps the feel of your book uh, a little disconjointed and um, 
it kind of takes away from, you know, the value of the moment of the book at that time. So um, I will say issue two, again, this feels more like the flow of the ISOM story. Like um, I would have taken part of ISOM one and made it more like Rip of Earth zero, almost like a teaser book of like 20 pages. And ISOM number one is like this, or I, it, I really wish they were like multiple books because it's almost like a three part story with different elements that are in there. And I think we get some of that now. So um, I like the backstory. I love the fact I don't totally get his power set and what we're going for, um, but I'm okay with that. But again, I do get these moments where I just don't, I don't care for that flow. See how it moves from here to no detail, that action back background disappear thing to back to this, back to this, back to this. Um, the powerful moment was derailed for me to some degree because of the way the art style changes. And that's what they're going for. Um, but again, it's just me not caring for that as much. If that's, it just, it, that's, 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 that's the leeway we have to go with a little bit of the critique sometimes. Um, that are not like story related and things like that. Um, but I do think that there, it definitely feels, uh, there's a lot of pages that are not ISM related. So again, it's a lot of universe building and things like that, which are fine because the, and the best thing about the Ripaverse is that because he was able to raise so much money, he will have a faster turnaround time to flush all of that out. So we won't have to wait as long as we may have uh, had to before, but we'll get a Yaira book we know he's hired Chuck Dixon. We know other people have come on board to um, expand the concepts, flesh out their own stories and details in a, in a timelier fashion where things can hit pretty quickly. Um, okay, I I hate being this way, and I keep going back to it because because some of the storytelling I'll get to in a minute, but the inconsistency with the art is Cliff Richards is fine. But there's moments where his design doesn't feel as consistent as like frame to frame. There's certain shots and frames that just don't feel quite right, don't look right. Um, I'm never, it's not like it's like, this is not like the big two bad or anything like that. It's not like the panels are off. So there is just some, some design things that didn't seem like it held up well between issues one and two. So let's get to that. Um, as far as the story goes, um, I feel like, and I don't know if this happens, um, maybe, maybe Eric has spoken on this and I've missed the video. Maybe this is something that he should or shouldn't do. I don't know, but, um, I don't feel like some of the dialogue is read out loud because sometimes there's dialogue that doesn't sound like how humans human. It just feels like dialogue and I don't, it kind of, it kind of distracts me from the story. Um, I will say that I've heard criticisms of ISOM number one, like little things. And a lot of times they're very misguided. Like it'll be, oh, well he put his hand on this woman and then later he's mad because the bouncer puts their hand on him. I'm like, okay, hold on. He puts his hand on the girl. Like, are you okay? Like it is a consoling arm to the shoulder it was not abrasive he didn't grab her and throw her and then the bouncer of course is coming in a very threatening manner hence the fight similarly there are moments where he behaves very erratically in the story and i don't know if that's explained well so i think the first time he's attacked in the club in issue number one he like punches the one guy like his there's blood blood bursting or whatever so i'm like well that was rather violent i don't quite get that um, and there, there's references to Mrs. So-and-so. And I'm like, I don't even know who Mrs. So-and-so is. And I don't care enough. So some of those criticisms, I mean, I think some things can hit the mark. Some things don't. I don't think Eric gets a fair shake from a lot of these people. So it is difficult to know how to take uh, criticisms and things like that. Um, for me personally, I just felt um, a lot. It. it it, it sure is a slow moving process for like 90 pages. When you think about like, um, I know I did last year, I did what Batman, um, 
uh, graphic novel. We've done a couple of those. Black Mirror, for instance, um, was definitely one of them. Reign of uh, Reign of Terror, I think we did. We think I did Reign of Terror, or did I blue um, the one with Blood Rain? Is there Blood Rain that we did? I think we did Blood Rain. I know there's the trilogy. Oh, Red Rain. We did Red Rain. We we're going to do Crimson Mist. Yeah. So those those graphic novels kind of have a better story flow and story arc and things like that. And you could thread together different volumes of those. Eisen doesn't do that. Eisen kind of wants it both ways. He's telling a very long, detailed, um, lots of setups, but not always a payoff. There's lots of things happening, but you don't always have context. That that is relying on a lot of my patience and faith that I have that he will deliver. Um, even with two issues, I'm still not a hundred percent in on he is going to deliver. The first issue felt more like a realistic street fight drama type adventure type thing, almost like a Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. meets Daredevil with like a Luke Cage main character, things like that. Issue number two comes along and it's completely different with almost like a lot of mythology and fantasy characters, right? Blood Ruth comes in and you're like, what has happened? There's like a dragon and there's, and there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. So I feel like I don't totally even understand the universe that I'm in. Let me give you just a couple of uh, panels here. Um, because I, I don't, I don't look, I, I, I don't dislike it. I just, I, again, it's consistency, right? We get our, well, you know, I don't care for that panel, but I get this stuff and I'm like, well, what am I, what am I enjoying or not? What kind of world am I in? Cause in one minute I'm dealing with like bouncers and hand to hand combat with that next minute I'm fighting these creatures and swarms or whatever. So, um, like I'm not opposed but I don't have a long rooted history to understand the dynamics of where some of these barriers exist and don't exist. Like I get the fact that I'm going to have a difference between daredevil's hell kitchen and whatever's going on with Dr. Strange and the mystic arts and the different dimensions. In Isom, I don't totally always get in just two issues, it's almost like he wants both. He wants to have both merged together, which is fine, but it's all happening in a way that it felt like there's just a lot more going on. I don't know. It, it's tricky to put my finger on because, again, we have these massively long books. Um, ISOM 2 is much better than ISOM 1, but it's also just like a whole bunch of stuff happening. And I don't feel like I understand like Isom a whole lot better. Like what was Isom when he first started versus what is Isom now? I'm not sure I'm giving you a massively um, insightful response to that, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. So um, I had not done one of the, anyways, that's my thought on Isom. Before I get any further, let me, do, let me just, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of, you know, punch the clock there and kind of pause because that's kind of where I hadn't done a review. I got issue number two. I stayed very high level. I don't want to totally spoil it for everybody. I want everybody to understand that part of supporting Eric is you're supporting, you're, you're investing in a business. You're investing and that that is the crowdfunding model. The crowdfunding model is um, you're supporting it. You're not necessarily doing a dollar for dollar transaction. Like you understand you're overpaying my, my opinion, my thought, maybe, maybe I'm the one that's wrong here, but to me, I understand I'm investing in Ripaverse. I'm investing in his company and in him. And I want to see it succeed over the long haul because I love the concept of third party independent indie creators. He's not the only one. Obviously I've talked a lot about Graham, and Chuck Dixon, Graham Nolan and Chuck Dixon, because they're, they're integral in my life. I, I still think Aaron Lepresti's Wraith of God is by far the best of the ones I've read to date. I think it's even superior to Billy Tucci's She, which is, has a long track record of being great. But I think Wraith of God just, it all it did and made me want more. I mean, it was incredible to see Jonah Hex meets Ghost Rider wrapped up so perfectly in a single book and yet also threading the needle for me to want another book immediately. So, um, I'm investing in them. I'm investing in their companies and their projects and their passions, not just, Hey, I want to just dollar for dollar for this book with Marvel and DC. 
they've become massive IPs. So if I'm buying a Batman shirt, I'm investing in their IP. If I'm, you know, buying a movie, I've invested in their IP. So it's 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 not a fair apples to apple comparison to talk about things that have been around for, you know, 40, 50, 60, 80 years. So I, I, I hate trying to line them up next to one. I know like they're exactly the same because they're not. So uh, with that, I wanted one last thing here. I just want to squeeze it. I'm not done sort of a retro old school comic review. I don't know if you guys have been enjoying the golden age rewind kind of thing. Uh, this just popped up on the app. Oh, I loved it. It's so much fun. This is an old gold key, Boris Koloff Mysteries. It's kind of an anthology little book. There's Boris right there. Um, you have different stories from different uh, creators. Uh, this has been redone, right? So it's 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 not like it's a it's a vintage thing like like I would have wanted, but I enjoyed this experience of just looking at older stuff that's you know maybe it's been redesigned, recolored, and things like that. Um, I, I'm such a I'm such a honk for that type of horror and that type of mystery things that have Karloff and the ghosty on them and stuff like that. So I don't know if any of you do. I love like EC comics and old horror comics and things like that. These anthology books are always fun because um, they they just they just bring together so many different things. I always feel like there's things that I like and hate all at the same time. Sometimes within minutes or pages of, of one another. Um, I think that these also these stories always do such a great job of dealing with elements of human nature. Um, in this case, like vanity, you know, dealing with vanity and the curse that can come, which is being obsessed with your physical appearance and things like that. Um, but look at how look how dramatically it changes when we get to the next story. I feel like I've I feel like I'm watching like an episode of like Twilight Zone or Outer Limits, and it's like okay, now another episode, or maybe Black Mirror if you want to talk about something like that. Anyway, it's called Boris Karloff's Gold Key. It's kind of like just this retro-looking feel, um, very just different and strange. And yeah, I, I'm not even sure that I'm thrilled with the stories and things that they went with. Here's another. Here's the where the house continued. Um, there, look who it is. Yeah, there he is. Um, I just really enjoyed that. I just enjoyed seeing the. Here's the different creators that they brought in. Um, it was just something a little bit different for me, and I, I found that refreshing. I just found that refreshing. I just had a good time with trying to see something different that I could um, wrap my head around. Maybe feel a little nostalgic, but also maybe feel very, you know, Halloween the season that kind of thing too. Um, and I just obviously I love just everything Boris Karloff. So not exactly the golden age rewind but it's sort of the feel right it's a little bit of both it's just you know uh yeah not like an ec comics though those are just those are classic gold so anyway that's my comic talk for today hopefully you're having a good time hanging out with me um i know it's not for everyone but i watch it so you don't have to my loki episode two will be coming up next i uh, check that out a little bit thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and supporting us we appreciate you so much take care everybody I am Pops. Yeah. <laughs>